But I'm Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, st folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the right-hand side. You just hit that subscribe button, and you get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you get it for a year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, happy Sweet Tooth Day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now, I know, I know one of the things that you and I have in common is our, our appreciation and love for dark chocolate. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, uh, now, do you have, like, a favorite you know, dark chocolate bar or something that you go to. Well, which, you know what it is? We have, we have William Dean right here. So, you know, he's a chocolatier, the real deal. Really? So, yeah. So, okay. like, I, I went up there for the, you know, for Tommy and Landon yeah. and uh, Allie for the yeah, thanks, yeah, not Thanksgiving, yeah. Halloween, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah, love yeah. that place. <laughs> so, okay, so, so my place, um, and I, I, I just love dark chocolate, good dark chocolate, and I think you guys have one in St. Pete. It's called Kilwins. Oh, oh, I love that place. That's oh, that's decadent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right? Yeah. So their ice cream is amazing. It, um, isn't it? <laughs> and, Listen, and, man, I have left the office, Steve, and gone <laughs> down and got a hot fudge sundae with vanilla ice cream. Because you can't get that too many other places now, man. That, I just true. want vanilla that's ice cream and real hot fudge with marshmallow on it, man. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, the next time you're down there, check out their dark chocolate non perils. Okay. I don't I don't know what it is that they do to that chocolate, but it's it's amazing. So, yeah. you know, so so that that's our that's our sweet too. So happy Halloween to all the uh, tigers. Yes bulls and bears that are out there and and i suppose that most folks are asking the question you know was last friday's explosive move higher a trick or a treat i love you man <laughs> <laughs> so we got to try to figure that out and this chart here what i thought we would do is take a look okay. at some of the seasonal patterns out here so this chart represents the average price movement of the s p 500 during the midterm election years and for the s p we've got 72 years worth of data now that's four you know that that basically equates to uh, about uh, uh, a little less than 20 specific instances the red line the red vertical line uh, so it's over 72 years but it's it's four you know it's four years apart yes. right, for each midterm so if we take a look at uh, the red line represents where we're at and that would seem to indicate that um that last friday's action is just another confirmation of a market that should continue to move higher and rally into year and in fact we hear a lot of people on television talking about this seasonal impact and and you and i've talked about the how the market typically makes a low in the mid-october time frame and then moves higher on on through that so I understand that typical seasonal pattern. The cool thing here with these folks from Seasonex is we've got these. It's very easy to take a look at any instrument for the most part and understand what the seasonality is. So that's the S&P 500 for the uh, midterm election years. However, this is the chart for the S&P 500 that represents the years after a midterm election. So the midterm election is next Tuesday. Yeah. We want to know what takes place after next sure. Tuesday. Right? Yes. And so when we take a look at that, and I just use those specific years, well, this suggests that we see a sideways to consolidating move into the mid or end, well, towards the end of, uh, towards the end of November out there. So if we look at, lastly, if I take a look at a bear market years for the S&P 500, so really three, three areas we're taking a look at. One, what's a typical midterm seasonal pattern look like? Two, what's it look like after that? And then three, which may be more important, what does it look like when we are in bear market years out there? So, Tom, you'll see here, and those folks that maybe grab the screens, the uh, check marks that we have on here okay. um, identify the actual years that are being used. So people can try to build their own. Now, what this tells us, this tells us that uh, the market should move higher into the end of this week, which kind of lines up. So it's pretty uh, when I pulled this chart up, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting because this all lines up with uh, with that nice move on Friday. We should see some we should see some window dressing. We should see the end of month, um, you know, uh, uh, movement into a uh, 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 move higher, uh, the, the money being put to work, and that should end by the end of this month. And then the market moves lower pretty precipitous, precipitously into the uh, end of end of uh, November timeframe. So that's for the S&P 500. 
Here's the Dow's bear market during the last 125 years. And again, all the uh, all the check marks uh, represent the years that are being tested. So we go back as early as 1901. And what this shows us here, again, the red line is where we're at, Tom. Yes. This shows us that we should rally through the end of the week and then move lower. Now, this shows us, in the case of the Dow, moving lower into the end of the year out there. The NDX 100, if we take a look at bear market years, because we're definitely in a bear market out here. So if we take a look at the bear market years over the last 37, which is only six data points. So the S&P is maybe a little bit more useful, the Dow more useful because of all the data that we have. But even still, in the NDX 100, this suggests a rally into the end of the week and then basically move lower into the end of the year. If we also take a look at last Friday's rally, as it pertains to the Dow specifically, this chart here shows diagonal and horizontal trading range boundary lines. So folks, the green lines out here, these are really courtesy of Bud Rolfs, who developed those horizontal trading ranges, or what he referred to as primary trading ranges. And and those green lines, it's pretty amazing how price will typically stop at one, uh, at one area. If it can clear one area, it will either move up or down to the next level. Um, but what we also have, those are the vertical uh, um, uh, horizontal trading ranges. As an yes. example here, at 34,152, there have been 10 instances of either opens or closes very near that price point. So that's what the numbers to the left of the of the actual price points uh, show us here. But what I also have is a rising price channel and a descending price channel. And interestingly enough, and I don't know how this works, I just know that it works. Yes. The price on Friday ran all the way up to the top of that descending price channel. Isn't that wild, man? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was like, how did how you know how does that work? Right, exactly. <laughs> But, um, but it does. And so I've got a little dash blue line up there as well, Tom. And so price could exceed that uh, or, or at least punch up to that level. If it exceeds that area, it says we get up to 34,152. But right now, all of this is suggesting that really what last Friday was was more of a trick than a treat or a very short term treat out here. And here's the real kicker. You know, last Friday's move was definitely explosive. But I've taken a look at uh, the bear market of 2000, the bear market of 2007, and then what I call the bull market from 09 to 18. And what this shows us, these blue boxes, yes. they represent 2% moves or more. The next one is 3% moves or more. And the next one after that, where you have one day rates of change of 4% or more. What you'll see is that the uh, is that in bear markets, we the 2% moves or more are predominant out there. Yes. In 07, it was about over 10%. Oh, yeah. And during bull markets, it's where you get the fewest number of large moves out there. And if we take a look at last Friday, during the 2022 session so far, 208 sessions, this has seen 21 trading days with moves greater than 2%. It's all signatures of bear market rallies out there. So I do believe that the answer to the question was, this is more of a trick than it is a treat. You know, it's amazing about that Dow chart you brought up there too. Um, 2018, December of 2018, I think the S&P went down like 350, 400. Because I remember sitting here doing the program, going into Christmas Eve saying, wow, man, I, you know, Merry yes. Christmas, man. We, you know, <laughs> exactly, yes, man. <laughs> Listen, hey. folks, get over to our website at TFNN. Hit Mastering Probability. You are off to the races. Steve, Thanks, you have a Tom. great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. You too. Take Thank care. you.